Hello, and welcome back to Instant GMP's orientation videos. This is video two of three. In the previous video, we gave an overview of what GMPs are and the impact they have on the efficacy of a product. In this video, we will discuss the master production record or MPR workflow, which reinforces GMP ideology. We will walk through how materials are added to the system, creating specification for those materials, organize the finished goods into a project, and create an MPR for that project. Before a production process can begin, we need to define what types of materials are used or created during production. There are two classifications of materials within the Instant GMP software, those that are used in manufacturing and those manufactured. Materials used in manufacturing are broken down into three subsections, raw materials, incoming works in process, or IWIPs, and other. An example of a raw material could be aspirin powder. An IWIP is a material that is being delivered by a vendor but is near completion such as aspirin pills being delivered to be bottled by your site. Materials that are manufactured are divided between finished goods or outgoing works in process, also known as OWIPs. Finished goods are products ready to be sold to a wholesaler so bottled aspirin being sold to a local drugstore. OWIPs would be your site selling those previously mentioned aspirin pills to a bottling company for final packaging. Each of these classifications have different entry screens. When entering a material used in manufacturing, you will be presented with the current screen. The material type dropdown comes with default types provided by Instant GMP, but can be edited to match your company's terminology. The part number is automatically generated by the software and is used as a unique identifier of the material. If you have a legacy numbering system you would like to maintain in the system, you can use the material ID section for this purpose. The cost slash unit in default order lead time will be covered in a future video called MRP. Default alert and reorder levels are used to send automatic reports. Materials that are manufactured have an identical screen as the materials used in manufacturing with the addition of the blue outline box. This box is to give the material name the option for a more precise description that includes the name, strength of a product, and a suffix. Once the entry is made, it would then be time to make a specification for that material. Specifications, as they were mentioned in the previous video, help create a quality product. The essence of them is a fact checked on others' work and your own work. They are compilations of tests and methods to verify that the vendor of your ingredients as well as the clients you are selling to are supplying consistent products without any adulteration. Specifications should apply to the final good along with the materials used to make that final good. The specification entry screen autofills the material name and number. New specifications start on version 1, but can be versioned up after approval if revisions need to be made. Pick an effective date for this specification. Enter the safety and handling instructions along with general sampling instructions. If there is documentation you wish to attach, then you can upload them. Then you can enter the tests associated with these material specifications. Once completed, the specifications should be approved by a project manager and quality manager or some equivalent based on site terminology or job roles. The test section of the specification is made up of four parts, test, method, acceptance, limit, and sampling. Test is what variable you wish to verify. Method is the means in which the variable will be tested. Acceptance limit is what is classified by your site or FDA regulation as acceptable. Sampling is how much of the material you will use to perform the test. Once the materials have a specification, it can be placed into a project. A project is an easy way to organize product, material, client, and personnel. The WIP slash final goods tab you see is key to creating an NPR because when creating an NPR, it will ask you to select a project and then ask you to select which product you wish to make from that project. This means you can add multiple products to one project. The materials tab can be filled out to allow allocation of material to a specific project if that is how you would prefer inventory to be organized. Clients are who you would sell product to, personnel is who will work on the project and what roles, also known as user rights, on the specific project. Let's focus on adding a final good to a project because without this we can't create an NPR. To add a material with a specification, click the whip slash final good tab and go to add a new record. The second menu will pop up and from here you can select which product will be produced with this project. If your product strength and suffix was not selected when the material was created, it will allow you to add them as the product name along with a tertiary modifier which is a primary container. These modifiers will be a part of the product name when adding the material to inventory after a batch record has been completed. Once the whip slash final good has been added to a project, we can now create an MPR.
An NPR outlines the general process that will be followed by manufacturing personnel consistently. You create batch production records, or BPRs, from the NPR to ensure the consistency is maintained batch to batch. Creating an NPR begins with selecting the project this NPR will be associated with. Select the final good produced by this NPR, the client of this product, and who from your site will author the NPR. This triple identifier for an NPR allows for high level of flexibility while allowing for a unique combination that is easily searchable within the software. The information for the material being produced is also inherited, allowing for consistent identifiers for the final good as well. These details are the main components necessary for creating an NPR. Once the NPR has been created, it must undergo an approval process and there are different statuses depending on the state of approval. Without any approval, the NPR is in progress, meaning it is still being edited and no approvers have signed off. Once one approver has signed off, the NPR becomes locked, which eliminates the ability to edit the NPR until someone unlocks it or rejects it. Approved means the NPR has been signed off by all members listed in the approval section and now the NPR can now have BPRs created off of it. Rejected means one of the approvers has rejected the NPR. This locks the NPR and means the NPR can, must be created all over again. Now after an NPR has been completed and has been approved or rejected, that NPR can undergo multiple changes. Copying an NPR means you are making a carbon copy of the NPR. However, you can change the product produced, strength, manufacturing step, bill of materials, etc. This is useful if you are producing similar products that are, are named differently or if it is the same product of a different strength. This streamlines the creation process if you are a site with multiple products. Versioning up is meant to allow for the addition of new documentation, equipment, a bill of materials, or manufacturing steps without changes to the product being produced. This is meant to make the same material but changing factors that are used to make the original project from the NPR, but it asks for a reason for change. This is for auditing purposes. Scaling up allows you to change the theoretical yield value of a batch and based on the new value, all materials in the bomb of the NPR will scale accordingly. This will create a new NPR, meaning your original smaller scale method will still be available if you ever need to return to smaller batches. This does not allow you to change the product made or its strength. This is simply to change the amount you will produce. Within the NPR, an author can enter all the details for the process, which includes material used in manufacturing, equipment, documents, in-process testing, and most importantly, the manufacturing instructions. All details will be copied when you create the associated BPR for production purposes. Once approvals are complete, the NPR becomes locked and can, can no longer be edited. This brings us to the end of video 2. Please continue to the next video where we will discuss batch production record workflow. Thank you and have a wonderful day.